And welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a cross section. A cross section is a really useful tool for your Nature Journal. I employ this technique all the time when I encounter a place where there's sort of an interesting change in heights of things that I find. So today, I'm in a stream bank, and there's a steep cliff on one side a little bit more of a slope on the other, and there's interesting plants sticking out all the way along the side. If I got back on the hill over there and I made a landscape drawing of this place, I might get some sort of a sense of what is going on, but that would take a lot of time, and it wouldn't be as clear as if I simply drew a sideways view of this place that I'm in. So what I'm imagining in my head when I'm making a cross section is if I just took a slice of this place. So I took a big knife and I cut down this side across the ground here through the creek and up the other side there and then pulled these two pieces of land apart and I looked at the shape of the land coming down on one side and going up on the other. That's a cross section. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be looking at a place. So I'm in a creek bed right here where the water has washed down the stream and it's removed all the dirt from the base of this giant redwood tree beside me, exposing a rocky cliff. And then on the other side, I have more of a gentle slope going up. You're going to see how making a drawing of this place with a cross section allows me to record a bunch of information really quickly and easily. But here's the cool thing. I could also use the same technique of looking at the sideways view of something if I were you know, looking at a mushroom or looking at uh, uh, any object that I find in nature, a pine cone. A sideways view of this is going to be a very powerful way to record information. It's sort of think of it as the opposite of a map. On a map, you're up above looking down. On a cross section, you're standing on the side looking at the shape of that land. You can really use these two techniques together very effectively. Sometimes when I draw a map, I'll draw a little line across it somewhere and then whoop, put in a cross section across that line, or you can use it on its own. So let's take a look at how I might construct a cross section view of this place. You can use this idea of making cross sections at lots of different scales. So, if I am out in a large landscape and I'm looking around, perhaps I'm seeing sort of big mesas. I could draw in a little picture of myself standing there in, in awe at these interesting cliffs. But similarly, here I've got one that's in a smaller scale. So I've got this kind of undercut bank and I've got a sort of a little sketch of, of me standing there checking it out. But you could also do a, a cross section on an even smaller scale. So sometimes I might be drawing a plant and here is its little leaves coming out. These would be opposite leaves coming out. Next little set right there. And I might do a cross section right across that stem. And so what I can do is just say across here, here's my cross section, and I will show like this is from, I'm gonna label this, this is A, the little A, A prime there, little dash right next to it. And then here's cross section A, and I'm showing that this stem in cross section is actually square. Some plants have round stems, some have square stems. So this is cross section A, so you can have a cross section of a large landscape feature like this. Or you could also show if you're, you're looking at a rock, you're describing a rock. 
here's the rock from the top. All right. But if I do a cross section across that, what I can do then is, is show that from the side, this is actually a really good skipping stone. Here's cross section A. Really kind of interesting little zone here in this in this undercut creek. And being able to make a side view like this is it's it's such an easier way to show the structure of this place. So what you want to do is to look around in your environment for a place that would be interesting to make a cross-section diagram. It could be a place where you find a little creek. Um, it could be um, a, a, a place where the tide comes up and down. It could be any place that you find that there's there's some sort of there's a difference in what you notice, kind of high to low. Make a side view drawing of that. Put yourself into the drawing. It's also it's kind of it's fun to have yourself included in your own journal. But also what this does is it provides a sense of scale. You see, you've got an idea of about how big this stump is because of this little drawing of 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 me standing here observing this. And try this technique and see what you notice. I find that when I'm making a cross-section diagram, I kind of my head kind of gets out of the, I've got to make a pretty picture mode, and it gets more kind of into the zone of what's what's interesting about this place. Making a cross section will help you notice details about a place that you otherwise would not see. So here's my cross section of this little part of the creek. I've got some trees. It's an old stump here that was cut down a long time ago in early logging days. Uh, they came through and they logged all the trees. These other redwoods have have, uh, um, have have sprouted since then. But the stream has come by. It's undercut this area here. We've exposed dark gray bedrock down here. Some sort of perhaps mudstone or siltstone. Um, there's a brown soil that is in these upper parts up here. So I can show those sorts of things in my cross-section diagram just by adding a little bit of color around the edge. I've also got my plants, my ferns growing in here. Notice the little key on the side, thimbleberry here and here and huckleberry. A huckleberry, interestingly, growing out of this stump. And that in that huckleberry is where the little winter wren showed up. So a little winter wren appeared, a very small, short-tailed little bird. And um, that was a, a, a little treat to see that. Um, sometimes when you're sitting still and you're you're co concentrating on other things, little animals will pop up around you, and so just just include them, get them into your journal, and draw that right there. All right, so you can you can show all the sorts of things that you find. You notice I've added my questions here. The final thing I'm going to do before I go is just sort of I'm going to check in and see if any, it reminds me of about this place. And uh, I'm going to add a few of those in various places around my page. I'm going to have my I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. I've got my words, my pictures. Ah, perhaps I can also count and see if there's anything that I can measure here. I'm going to go do that now. For your homework for today, find some object or find a place that is interesting to you and one where making a cross-section will help you better describe that place. Then, make your cross-section. Use your words, pictures, numbers. Use your I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. Get all that stuff going on your page. But now you have the extra tool of your cross-section. And just see what it's like when you start to apply that tool, or you're looking around for like what sort of a place would be interesting to use a cross-section. 
you'll notice things in a different way. You'll make observations you otherwise wouldn't have seen. It's a lot of fun. I hope that this technique becomes one that you can incorporate into regular parts of your own nature journaling practice. This is one of the strategies I use all the time when I'm exploring an ecosystem. I find that it gets me looking around the forest in a very different way. So see what happens when you give it a try and what discoveries you will make. Until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. I'm John Muir Laws. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do do do.